Everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoterica and our new side series, Retro Revamp Rewind, where we take a look at five of the original games I started my channel talking about, and we cover them again because my original commentary and thoughts weren't exactly up to par for how good these games really are and how unique and rare they are. Before we get too far involved, if you can do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like and subscribe, and ring that notification bell. We also have a new Patreon as well, the link's below if you feel so inclined. But today we're taking a look at Total Vice, and this is one of the games that was previewed in magazines back in 1996 and 1997 as a prospective game to come to the 3DO M2 home console. And there's only five screenshots of this game online, up until the point that I found a board and I captured it for YouTube. There was never any gameplay videos that you could see, so for the longest time I was curious what this game really was. I knew it was kind of like a gangster-themed street gang shooter, but other than that, I really had never seen anything about it until I was able to find a PCB. A friend of mine in Australia found one from one of his collector friends and shipped it all the way to Chicago for me to be able to capture and play this. And I now have five different Total Vice boards with different revisions, and honestly, I can't see a single difference between any of them, but I went from having zero to having way too many in my closet. But as far as the game's concerned, it's another awesome game on the Konami M2 platform. We've already shown Evil Knight, and that's an awesome horror-themed light gun game, but now we have a completely different kind of, like, dirty, hairy, street-shooting game that I really enjoy because all five of the games on the Konami M2, the soundtrack is exceptional on all of them, and the soundtrack on this has that kind of, like, really fast rock music that you would expect from a shooter like this. And this was released in 1997 versus Evil Knight being in 98, and it runs on a earlier revision BIOS, which doesn't really change much, but it is one of the earliest games for the Konami M2 platform, so I would say visually it's slightly less impressive than Evil Knight is, but it's still really awesome to look at, and had this come home in 96, 97, this would have blown away anything on the PlayStation 1 or the Nintendo 64. And I just love all the different character designs here. I swear this is kind of like a take on Rucker Howard, but you come into this really dramatic camera sweep, and you have this dude up here with his leather vest tattoo and a giant chain gun that he just holds in his hands like it's no big deal, like it weighs nothing. And that's what I love about this game, is that it feels like Lethal Enforcers, except a version of it that's in full 3D. Because Lethal Enforcers came out in 92, and the sequel came out in 95, and then you had a third game in the early 2000s. So it seems like Total Vice being a 1997 game maybe meant that it was going to be Lethal Enforcers 3, but no matter what it's called, it is an awesome game. And I love that he just throws his chain gun directly at you and magically comes up with another, like he has an infinite chain gun supply behind that bus. And his death sequence is just perfect and elaborate, he shoots up into the air for the longest time. I don't know if it's supposed to be comedic, but it definitely makes me laugh. And I kind of like that about the game, is it definitely has a sense of humor and a charm to it that makes you want to play it over and over again. And I would say that if you're into light gun shooting games, this is definitely one that you would want to pick up. Obviously, if you watch my channel whatsoever, you'll know that arcade and home light gun games are one of my favorite genres because when I was growing up and going to arcades, every time I saw a new light gun cabinet, I absolutely had to play it. And interestingly enough, this game was actually shown in an Eddie Murphy movie as well. But otherwise, I never actually saw this game on arcade floors in the 90s. I don't think it got a ton of distribution. It kind of came and went like a lot of the Konami M2 games. But now that we're at the wharf here, basically we're trying to break up a drug deal in progress, and the boss of the level kind of has a Scarface vibe to it, a little bit of Miami Vice going on there as well, and I like that each level has its own kind of theme. We went through the Biker Street Gang level, now we're going to the wharf and killing all the guys wearing, you know, Hawaiian shirts, and the guy at the end, the boss is going to be wearing a full white suit, and in the last level we're kind of doing like a Nakatomi Tower diehard sort of race to the top of the tower to beat the villain. The game just has a lot going on, the music is great, the sound effects are good. The one downside is that the guns originally had speakers in them, so when you shot, you get a sound effect close to your ear. Now you can't get that to mix into the capture music, and I actually don't even have the guns that have those sound effects in them. And don't shoot the cops, you'll lose a credit, they love doing that to you. So, the guns are actually harder to find than the arcade PCBs themselves. You can grab this game for around $200 if you find it. It is rare, but the rarity is not going to really translate to the expense. But finding the actual guns that go with the game are probably harder to get than the game itself. And like I said, it works perfectly fine with a hap gun or with the Evil Knight guns. But if you're missing the speaker, you don't get the gunshot sound effect. To me, it doesn't bother me whatsoever because you still get the sound effects of ricochets 
and you still get the characters yelling when they die. But if you're looking for the complete experience, you are going to need to find those guns. Or you could wire up a speaker into the pins on the PCB and just have it sitting next to you. It's been a project I've wanted to do and I just haven't yet. What I'm going to do now is just let you listen to a little bit of the soundtrack and sound effects because they're absolutely great. And I'll be back in just a minute and we'll close out Total Vice, but it's an awesome game. Enjoy listening and I'll talk to you in a second. For ruining our deal, I'm gonna butcher you. Like Scarface is going to fall down and electrocute himself on a grate, which I have no idea why it's electrified. That's neither here nor there. And moving on to the final level in the game, I would say it's my favorite because it's basically a race to the top, and the boss battle set piece is one of my favorite things to play in the game itself. But if you are an arcade light gun game collector, I can't recommend this game enough. Not just because it runs on a rare platform that was never released as a console only in arcades, but it just has a ton of things going on for it. Each level is diverse and unique, the soundtrack is awesome, the graphics for their time are really nice to look at, and it's really easy to set up because these guns just use an RGB and sync signal, there's no extra sensors involved, so getting this up and running on a super gun isn't very difficult. I will say that there is a standard and a medium resolution version of this game, and if you don't have a medium resolution monitor, you're going to want to convert it to a standard def, and I have some videos in my playlist to show you how to convert that over, but it looks great in standard definition as well. But it's just a really fun game, and I wish they made more arcade games like this. I loved the 90s like gun shooters. They were violent, they were fun to play, they had a lot of action to them, and they had a little bit of humor as well, kind of like 90s action movies. This kind of feels like Die Hard to me, where you're racing to the top of the tower and the boss is even going to make a Christmas joke. And I definitely feel like this was inspired by some films, like Scarface, like Die Hard. And I love that you have the guy that falls directly in the toilet and just shakes his hands. They put a lot of little touches in this game. And unfortunately, there aren't any branching paths, so it is very linear. But replaying it for high score to see how far you can get on one credit is really awesome. And I just love this final boss battle with a helicopter flying through the different high-rise buildings downtown. It's just a fun way to end the game. But short of that, that is Total Vice. Like I said, if you're into these type of games, try to find one. It might take you some months to actually find a PCB that is available, but don't pay any more than like $250 or $300 for it because it doesn't go for it more than that. But this is the last video we had to show on Retro Revamp Rewind. We hope you enjoyed it because it was a lot of fun to talk about the games that started off the channel. But don't worry, we'll have videos on Sunday and Tuesday as well. And we'll have some brand new stuff coming up on the channel. But if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below. I love chatting with you guys. But short of that, if you could do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like, and subscribe, and ring that notification bell. It takes a lot of time and energy to make each one of these videos. And this capture two years ago was the first time Total Vice had ever been seen in motion on YouTube. And he is blowing up, and that is all that's going to happen. See you next time. Bye-bye.